Hi, welcome to High Road. My name's Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to imagine an entire drum kit just on your practice pad. Maybe you've already got a proper drum set like I do, but you can't use it where you live because of sound restrictions. Or maybe you've got a practice pad, but you want to be able to use it for more than just rudiments and exercises. Well, I want to show you a mental visualization approach that I use so that I can imagine an entire drum kit right here on my practice pad. Okay, now I'm using an Evans Real Feel practice pad. Uh, this is just one of the small ones. And they make these in an octagon shape, which is really helpful for what I'm about to show you because you can sort of divide areas up a little more easily. But if all you have is a round practice pad like this, um, that's fine as well. You just got to use your imagination a little bit differently. All right, so here's the trick. You have to be able to mentally divide the pad into different zones that represent each drum and cymbal on the drum kit. And before we get started, I just want to mention this is not an electronic drum pad. It's not a trigger pad, but I will at times throughout this video overlay some sample sounds over what I'm doing so that you can hear what I'm actually imagining in my head. But those sounds are not actually coming out of the pad. I'm editing those in later, just so you know. All right, let's get started. All right, I want you to imagine two diagonal lines running from here across to there. This entire segment on this side represents a snare drum. I also want you to imagine a segment just here, and that represents the hi-hat. To me, this arrangement closely resembles the relationship between a real hi-hat and snare on a drum kit. The way the sticks are crossed, but you can still access both areas fairly easily with either stick. The next two segments are tom one, and tom 2. And as you can see, they have the same triangular relationship with the snare that you'd have on a real drum kit. So all of your sticking movements for fills should be roughly the same. Just in miniature. The remaining areas up here are divided into a triangular crash cymbal zone, and this bigger section here is the ride cymbal. And again, I feel like this arrangement of cymbals closely resembles the way you'd see them on a real drum kit. I think it's appropriate to give the ride symbol a larger area here on the pad because a ride symbol is a fairly large symbol and it has multiple areas of articulation. So you might want to think of the area to the edge here as the ride bell, whereas this is more like the rim just for keeping time. Or maybe you'd like to think of the top half as a crash symbol for when you crash the ride and this is where you keep time. It's basically up to you how you want to visualize that. As far as your feet go, just place them on the floor and use them the same way you would with a regular drum kit. So you've got kick and closing the hi-hat. With all that said, let me do a quick demonstration of what a typical drum beat might look like on this drum pad. My first pass is just going to be purely the pad and my feet on the floor. The second pass, I'm going to overlay some drum samples and some graphics so that you can see what I'm actually imagining and hearing in my head while I'm doing it. Here we go. And now here's the same thing, but with sounds and graphics. Before I finish up, I should mention that you can actually buy practice pads that already have different colored zones on them. And each zone actually sounds and feels a little bit different because they use different grades of foam. Uh, one example is the Drumeo P4. Now there's nothing wrong with those pads, they're amazing, but the layout on those is fixed. So if you want to imagine your drum kit on the pad in a slightly different way, like the way I've shown you today, you won't be able to do it with those commercial ones because they're fixed, the layout can't be changed. Now this method that I've described today does come with a bit of a disclaimer, and that is that if you haven't been playing drums for very long, if you're kind of early in your journey as a musician, you may have trouble hearing the sounds in your head the way I've described them in this video. That's a process called audiation. It's the ability to hear sounds in your head. 
When we read a book, we hear our own voice reading the book usually. That's one form of audiation. But for musicians, it's a bit more specific. The instrument that you play, like drums or guitar or whatever it is, you want to be able to hear that sound in your head as easily as you can hear your own voice when you talk to yourself or when you read a book. So if you don't have that ability yet, then this exercise is probably not going to be very satisfying for you. However, just by doing this exercise and trying to imagine drums as you do it, that can allow you to develop the ability to audiate. All I can say is give this a go. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. As always, if you want to learn how to make music, record music and build musical stuff, start now by subscribing below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.